We'll be continuing our team coverage also today through 4, 5, and 6. And we will, of course, be bringing you live coverage of Deputy McGowan's funeral, which is set to start in less than three minutes right here on WBIR and on WBIR.com. We do want to tell you a little bit about Deputy Greg McCowan. He was 43 years old. He was not only an officer with Blount County Sheriff's Department, he was also a father and a grandfather. He is survived by his fiance Lee, his children, two children, and a granddaughter. He'd been with the Blount County Sheriff's Department since 2120. And a little uh, a side note here, back in April of 2021, he received a life-saving award for his part in saving a man who was trapped in a burning vehicle. He clearly had a huge impact, not only in his department, but in that entire community. And I think that is why we are seeing such a show of love and support in tribute to this deputy. And of course, that tribute is going to play out during the funeral, which we'll be carrying live here just moments from now. We do want to let you know that the governor is set to appear at the funeral as well, and the sheriff is set to speak at the funeral. There will be songs and friends also speaking during that service. And this is a look at what folks who are at the church right now are seeing as part of his funeral. Again, just pictures, and you can hear a little music in the background as well. We may want to just listen in and see some of the pictures to get a better idea of who Deputy McCowan was. You are looking at glimpses of Deputy McCowan's life as we await his funeral, the start of his funeral. Well, Deputy McCowan, he will travel the route that you're going to be seeing on your screen after the funeral. He'll be going from Severe Heights to Grandview Cemetery. You see that line. That is the route. The Sheriff's Office asking you to stay safe, stay off the road. But if you do want to be a part of it, you can line up. And one thing they will be seeing as they make that trip to Grandview Cemetery, flags along that route will be, be at half staff. That, uh, that coming from Governor Bill Lee earlier today. Blount County and Maryville City Schools, they will close early today because of the procession. Actually, some closed right now, some earlier. Blount County Elementary dismissed at 1215. Blount County Middle and High Schools, they are dismissing as we speak. Maryville City Schools, they will dismiss 90 minutes early. Alcoa City Elementary Schools, they dismissed about 30 minutes ago at 1230. The middle school and high schools in Blount County, they will dismiss right now. Also, Blount County government offices are closed today. The mayor says that's to honor and respect the funeral services. And you can help the family of Deputy Greg McCowan. As we have mentioned, he is both a father and a grandfather. You can scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you to WBIR.com for more information on how to donate. Well, people are lining up for the procession. This following the funeral at Severe Heights. You can see right here this live picture coming to you. And you can see people just lined along the, the strip of road, which of course they are waiting for the procession. That of course will come after the funeral. The funeral set to begin any minute at Severe Heights Baptist Church in South Knox County. And just a reminder on that, you can stay with us. We will be here on air throughout the funeral service. If you have to step away from your television, you can also be online to watch it and you can stream it through the WBIR app as well. And we will bring all of that to you live. We did get a little glimpse, by the way, of what we can expect from that funeral. We do know that there will be, of course, an opening prayer 
prayer. The national anthem Governor Bill Lee will be there. Also Blount County Sheriff James Barong will be speaking. Uh, no surprise there. A chaplain, some friends of his. So plenty um, of content that will be in the funeral for sure. And to add to that, one thing that you will notice too, uh, if you're looking at officers, their badges, they are wearing their badges and you will notice a piece of black material or cloth placed horizontally across the badge. This is traditional. It is a sign of mourning. Once again, flags lowered half staff. The governor making that order earlier today. Now at the time of the funeral, this could happen. Uh, black bunting can be displayed on the station and on a cruiser. One thing we have seen in the past few days, Deputy McCowan's uh, cruiser is in front of the mm -hmm. Blount County Justice Center and it has been covered with flowers, cards, tributes to this law enforcement officer who lost his life last week. One of the other interesting things that will be there is a flag that has been brought in and is often carried across the country by a special honor guard. That flag is only touched one time by a pair of gloves and then those gloves will then be given to the family and it travels along to the funerals for fallen officers. We understand that after today's ceremony, it will then go to El Paso, Texas for another fallen officer. So just a special tribute for the family and for the officer today and to that point on um, the officer down memorial page I want to share some numbers with you there have been 15 officers who have died in the line of duty so far in 2024 134 who have died in the line of duty last year and since five years ago 1734 law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty. That coming from the Officer Dow Memorial page. And of course, here in our community in East Tennessee, we're not far removed from the death and the funeral of Tucker Blakely, the Knox County Sheriff's Deputy. That happened just back in October. Back then, we saw the same sort of ceremonies and funerals and processions. And speaking of the procession we're preparing for after the funeral, which is starting any moment now, we wanna go out to Olivia Degg, who is live along the procession route to find out more about what she's seeing out there, Olivia. Brittany, Robin, there are about a dozen people lined up behind me and they keep coming. And what we've learned by just talking to them is this is a deeply personal event, having this deputy transported along this procession route. And this means that this community is so plugged in to the law enforcement family. I'm gonna step out the way so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. We've had several people lining up. You'll see lots of people holding American flags. The entire route that we've driven today, we've seen ha flags at half staff, as well as uh, the, bl the thin blue line flag We've seen blue ribbons, blue bows. We've seen businesses that have signs saying that they are praying for Deputy McCowan's family. And so just a really, really somber scene, but it's just a testament of how this Blunt County community is coming together in this tragedy and showing support to a fallen deputy. Back to you. Olivia, thank you very much. We want to uh, fill you in if you're just now joining us. The funeral for Deputy Greg McCowan set to begin any minute now at Severe Heights Baptist Church. We want to go to 10 News reporter Vinay Simlot, who is there with uh, everyone who is waiting for the funeral service to begin any minute, Vinay. And Robin, we saw that procession file in maybe an hour and a half to two hours ago. and. We want to go now to the funeral that is getting started. We as, as you can see now, that funeral is set to begin. So we want to take you there and we'll listen in now.
You may be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff French, the Chief Deputy with the Blount County Sheriff's Office. On behalf of Greg's family and the Blount County Sheriff's Office, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for being here. We're here today to honor Deputy McCowan's duty and sacrifice and to celebrate a life well lived. At this time, I would like to ask you to stand again and would like to invite Blount County Sheriff's Office Chaplain Brad Bryant to come and lead us in an opening prayer. And after the prayer, I would ask that you remain standing for the national anthem to be performed by Deputy Shelby Eggers. Please stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're gathered here today to celebrate the life and service of Deputy Greg McCowan. While we thank you for our time with him, we can't help but be frustrated with our questions being unanswered and our hearts staying so broken. Even after yesterday's events, there was some solace in knowing that Greg's killer had been caught, but our hearts are still broken. Maybe you're just trying to teach us that healing will never come from getting even or paying back, but the true healing only comes from you. So we are coming to you now asking for peace and comfort and yes, healing. I ask that you be with this precious family by blood and by blue who have been attacked by evil. I ask that you surround them with your love and mercy. I ask that you calm the minds and hearts of those who continue to ask the what if questions and toss and turn, unable to sleep at night. Speak peace into their spirits. While this reminds us that there is evil in the world, we also know that the brave men and women of the thin blue line that are physically behind Greg's family here stand ready to fight that evil. Give them strength, give them courage, give them victory. We commit everything that takes place today in the sanctuary to you. May we honor you, Father, as well as Greg, a true man, a father, a grandfather, a deputy, and a friend. May he rest in peace as his blue family takes it from here. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. be seated. At, at this time, it's my honor to introduce our governor of the great state of Tennessee, Bill Lee. <clears throat> it's with 
great honor that I have the opportunity to stand before you to bring honor to the life of Greg McCowan. Um, <clears throat> Maria, my wife, is with me here today. It should be noted as well that Lieutenant Governor McNally is here, Speaker Sexton is here, members of the General Assembly are here because this moment and this service is one where leaders all across the state will pause and reflect to honor a hero. The men and women that serve every single day to um, protect and defend and to make certain that the rest of us in this state um, can live peaceably. I'm grateful for every single one of you, and I'm grateful that you're here today to honor a man who served alongside you and who is a hero to all of Tennessee. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to welcome you and thank you. I want to speak especially to the family. Greg McCowan is a hero. He is one of those who have chosen to put their life in harm's way to serve the people of this state. And you are the ones who suffer the most today because of that decision. We are the beneficiaries of the heroism of your father and of your loved one and of your son. He is a hero and a law enforcement official and a leader to all of us in Tennessee, but to you, he is a dad, he is a son, he is a loved one. And for you, this goes way beyond just being a hero. My prayer for you is that the Lord's nearness be a sweet thread in the bitter fabric of these days that you that are your lives right now. My other prayer is that this that you I hope that you will have a moment to take in the magnitude of the honor that is being bestowed upon this man who served all of us. It is our hope that this in some small way, this honor in some small way will be a part of the healing process for you so that you will one day realize just what he means to all of us, not just to you. Thank you for the incredible honor that I have to honor him today. Not 
just my daddy. I'm not selfish, but please take care of every badge out there. As he got older, he was drawn to that shiny badge. To a flame. Tin codes and scanners staying up late, listening for my number or my name. Till one night on the radio, he heard his daddy screaming. In a panic, that young man fell down on his knees and he prayed. Dear God, I'm scared, I'm worried. Why does my daddy have to wear a gun to work? Will someone hurt him, take him away from me? Be this favor, God, and I won't say a word. Not just my father, I'm not selfish, but please take care of every badge out there. son who knows his daddy loves him and it's no surprise to anyone he was sworn in on monday they gave him his own badge and his gun oh god i'm scared i'm worried why does my little boy Just my little boy, I'm not selfish, but please take care of every badge out there. No, not just one, but everyone who wears a badge out there. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, a friend of Greg's, Billy Radford. to start by saying how honored I am to be here before y'all speaking today.
y'all know him as little, y'all know him as Greg McCown. To his real close friends and family, they know him as Little G. So we always called him. And though he may not be blood, but he was my brother and family. We showed up by this love that we shared with each other. To see his kids grow up, to be the young lady and the young man that they are today. He's one of the first ones that's to hold my wife and my kids at the hospital after they was born. We met almost 20 years ago at work. We all worked at a boat company. Became friends there and realized we had a lot in common. Started hanging out, you know, doing things together. Started uh, going out, like to go boating and just ride around and through the mountains and everything. Then we started going to church together not long after that. I know Greg was really uh, ready to meet Jesus because when he got saved, we was there. Got to Spent a lot of good time, good memories with him at church and outside of church as well. You know, he spoke often of wanting to be a police officer for years as we worked at, at Mastercraft. When he finally started on that journey, we all knew that he would be one of the best officers possible. He loved people, always had a smile on his smile or a joke or a funny story to tell. Never met a stranger. And you knew that wherever you went <clears throat> with him that you would find someone to talk to. He loved his friends like family. You know, like I said, we are family. We love Kayleen, Caden, more than life itself. There was then baby Ella. It was a blessing on top of that. Leah filled his heart, and he was the uh, happiest in his life that he'd been in a while. When he spoke of Leah, you could tell that we she that she was who he belonged with. Today is our chance to say thank you for the way you brighten our lives. Even though God granted you but half, half a life, we will all feel cheated that you were taken from us and we must learn to be grateful that you came along at all. Now that you are gone, we truly appreciate what you did. We have all despaired at our loss over the past few days and only the strength of your friendship has helped us to move forward to today. Now we know 
Greg was a very special person. But he also had his, only, his own style outside of the uniform. We called it the little G starter kit. If he wasn't at work, if it was summertime, he needed a pair of slides, cargo shorts, and a muscle shirt. You were set to go. Oh yeah, and a white ball cap. Some of his favorite things. He's got a few more, a couple funny things to tell. You know, most of y'all officers seen him with a shaved head. Before that he had hair, well, a little bit of hair. He tried to keep it growing long, you know, to hide it. So me and my wife, we was on the way home from work one day. We passed him down 411 and I asked my wife, I said, he's in a Jeep and top was off and everything. I said, did you see that? And she said, no, what is it? So I slowed down, he caught back up with me. And what Harry had grown, it was sticking up like this. <laughs> so whenever he, we slowed down and he, I looked at him, he knew what we was looking at. He gave me that mean look, went and held his hair down. So I wouldn't laugh at him anymore. He had a, we go over to their house for cookouts and birthday parties and everything. He got to talking about one of these yard darts. The old style with a metal tip on it and everything, they outlawed them. He wanted to set. Well, he found a set on somewhere and he got them. So it was, so we played yard darts for a long time. <laughs> Where we go over, we'd get to play yard darts with them or whatever we can do. Just sit around bonfires and just talk. One more story here. He got, some of y'all live around here, we go to Cage Cove. There's a little road, a gravel road called the Parson Branch. We'd go up there and he'd be in his Jeep. We'd have to, we'd have to make sure we stay behind because he liked to get a little wild. There's one area up there, it turns back and it's real wide. He'd go up there and do donuts. So you knew whenever we got close to it, you'd have to slow down. He slang gravels all over us. And the kids, they was little, they was big back there just laughing. Want to do more. I'd like to say he's truly a friend. He's going to be missed. I'd like to finish by reading John 15, 13. The greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what he did for us. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Greg Willis to the podium. He was also a, a dear friend of Greg's. This is a day I never thought would come. For some reason, I always thought I'd go first. <clears throat> I, like Billy, met little Greg at Mastercraft, building boats. We always had a lot of fun, that little Greg. He's real jumpy. We gouge him every chance that we got. So it wasn't surprising if you got a, a lip saw throat at you, a cut out. Sometimes he, 
He'd even flip your tools over in the floor just because you messed with him. <coughs> it grew quickly, the friendship that he and I had. They called him Little G. They called me Big G. I don't know why ain't neither one of us above five, above five eight. I might have been just a little heavier than he was. We grew together quickly. Our children playing in diapers underneath church pews, going playing in a mud hole if we could find one. He liked riding up Old Wallen Highway. He called us go snake hunting. And what that meant was whoever run over the most snakes won. But what it really ended up in is us finding a mud hole somewhere. I got to talking to Greg one day down at Mastercraft. I pleaded with him to come with me and go to church with me. If you knew Greg before he knew the Lord, he was a rough character. He don't tell him what he'd tell you or what he'd do whenever you offended him. He said he'd come. I got to be lucky enough to be on the altar beside him whenever he got saved. I got to see his babies. Ask the Lord to save them. But you see, Greg, it goes a lot deeper with Greg. I'd be deployed. And he was one of the men that come to my house and took care of my two children, took care of my wife, watched after my home. I couldn't be there. He was one of the men that stepped in the gap for me. Whenever I needed somebody the most, I could call on him. And he'd always say, big homie, what do you need? What's going on? I'll be right there. Little does he know he's still right there because it'll never leave me. It went far deeper than a, than a brotherhood. They went far deeper than a friendship. But I know without a shadow of a doubt one day that I'm going to see my friend again because of what he did a long time ago. And what he and I shared that can never be broken, that can never depart because it comes from someone greater than me someone greater than him. And that's why we shared the love for each other that we had. Vacations, church services, revivals, just sitting on my porch and just talk. Out in the garage, working on things and him always accusing me of, I don't know why you're doing that, you're just going to change it anyway. <laughs> he was my wiring technician because I'm horrible at wiring. A lot of precious memories we shared. I'm going to miss him. But I don't find it shocking that he done what he done for his fellow officer. Because the truth of it is, he'd do it for anybody in this room. If you were in harm's way, he would stand in harm's way for you. Even before he'd come a police officer. That was just Greg. He loved to laugh. He loved to have fun. But he loved to serve and protect. 
So whenever I got the call and I found out about him, I wasn't shocked to find out what had happened. But in fact, I can't think of another way that he would have wanted to go out. He went out doing what he loved. That was his dream to be a police officer. What more could you ask for to go out doing what you love? But I'm thankful. I know our, our hearts ain't the only one that's heavy. I know a lot of you that served with him, and if you've known Greg, I'm sure there's a special place in your heart for him. He was just that kind of guy. It'll get easier. I don't know. Because I can't rely on me. There's a hole in my heart that I truly feel will never be filled. And I lost a friend beyond all friends. But one day, one day, I'll see my friend again. Thank you. was a carpenter 50 years he pounded out blood sweat and tears one day he hung his hammer up he wanted to do the things he loved what once was Sunday fishing now was seven days a week down at the creek cause I don't want to drive another nail I've worked hard to do my job and I did it well I've got the scars on these two hands that show I haven't failed but I don't want to drive another nail Sunday rolled around at a country church for the lost and found. Oh, Sam was there against his will as a preacher spoke on Calvary's hill of how they took the master and they nailed Sam crying as he fell down on his knees. I don't want to drive another nail. I want to live my life for you. I want to do it well. You've got the scars on your two hands that show where I have failed. Lord, I don't want to drive another nail I don't want to drive another nail I want to live my life for you I want to do it well You've got the scars on your two hands that show where I have failed Lord I don't want to drive another nail
Next, I would like to introduce uh, Blount County Chaplain Roger Murphy. Join me for prayer for just a second. Lord, take a look at us. Man, we're hurt and confused. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do with ourselves. I just ask you to come join us here. Help us as we move through this. We're just, we're just a, we're just a empty pot needing to be filled up by you. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. And I pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for that. Isaiah six. Verse 8 says this, And then I heard the voice of the Master say, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? And I guess Greg said, I'll go. Send me. And he signed up. First time I ever laid eyes on him, I was down at the training academy early on, and I played a little game. Which one of these is not like the others? <laughs> because he stuck out like a sore thumb against the 12 year olds. <laughs> and I thought, I bet, I bet there's a story there. <laughs> I bet there's a story about, about him coming to law enforcement at this time in his life. But, but golly, he signed up and there he went. I talked to the training academy and they said that Greg had a strategy Y'all know him better than I do, but he had a strategy going in. Fly as far under the radar as he could possibly fly. Make sense? They said he tried so hard to fly under the radar, he stood out. <laughs> and so his strategy kind of failed. It's kind of, it's kind of a, 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 a amazing. The second thing I ever noticed about Greg is that smile, or whatever you call it. I, I'm not joking. When I looked at him and saw that smile, he looked just like a kid who had just popped a piece of candy in his mouth he wasn't supposed to have. You know what I'm talking about, right? Or maybe he knew a little something that nobody else knew. He just had that look. But it was infectious. And it somehow made him very uh, uh, approachable. Does that, that make sense? There's just something about that. Uh, as, uh, by the way, he did know something that other people, a lot of people don't know. We just heard about some of that. On the job, he was incredibly respected. And as, as these days have gone by, I just started writing down some things that people started saying about Greg. And here's the words that they used to describe him. I'm talking about over at the sheriff's office. Nice, kind, solid, steady, respected, loyal, fun, professional. He lived with joy. He lived with integrity. You know he won a life-saving award, right? It's a big deal. He put his life on the line. For somebody he was a hostage negotiator added extra training and and some don't know I guess that he recently gone through the interview process to become a crime scene investigator he's gonna get that job too that goals what a good cop what a good man and what a good friend I'm going, to, I'm going to say something. I hope I can speak for the family for a second. They have been overwhelmed by the love from this blue family. And for the family, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You have no idea how this has sustained them. Thank you, blue family. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, wrap, for wrapping them up in your arms and taking care of them. They'll never, they'll never forget you for it. It's a big family, isn't it? And Mammy, we're, we're, we're all coming at Christmas. <laughs> Let me say something to the family. 
just you guys. Everybody else can listen for a second. I already told you this, but they need to hear it. When a, when a man loses his wife, he's a widower. And when a wife loses her husband, the word for it is widow. And when a child loses their parents, the word for it is orphan. But there is no word in any language for a parent who's lost a child. It's, they can't make that word up because it's too horrible to consider. And so, so for, your, for your intense loss, we, we don't understand, but we love you and, and hurt with you. It, 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 it's, it's, it's almost uh, unspeakable. The old man, did he love his mama. He took her own ride-alongs. Who does that? Had one come, you had one coming up, didn't you? You know why he did it. He wanted his mama to be proud of him. And boy, was she proud of him. And to the kids, Kate and Kelly, your losses. Unbelievable. But all the things that they're saying about your dad and all the things that your blue family said about your dad, I see that in you. I see it in I, I see it. I have been blown away by your character and, and, and by how solid and loyal and kind the way you love that woman right there is unbelievable. You know, success always leaves a trail. It leads right back to daddy and mama. And thank you for investing in these guys. We love you. Leah, your loss is different. But my goodness gracious, how much this family loves you. They have embraced you and loved you. <laughs> I can see why he picked you out. I can see why he loved you. And thank you for loving him. Can I tell you guys where your dad is right now? If you wondered? The Bible's crystal clear on this, Pastor. The moment life left his body, he was escorted into the heavenly realm. From the day this, no, the moment this happened, he's not been alone. He's had an escort. You saw it this morning. It's going to be a huge escort this afternoon. He's been escorted. He's never been alone. But the escort into heaven, whoo, son. You know who's up the front of the line? And all your family that knew Jesus are standing there. Hey, Greg. And they're embracing him. But I also see all that line of fallen officers who understand. And they're cheering him in. And there's Jesus. And I know Greg wants to say something to him, but he, he can't because Jesus is smothering him with love and his attention. He's home, baby. He's home. He's home. That moment that, I, that he got there, his body was glorified. I cannot wait for that because mine's getting kind of wore out. You know what I'm saying? His body was glorified. His body is vibrant. It's young. It's whole. It's perfectly designed for what's next, and that's called eternity. In the words of my dispatcher sitting over here, they would say, 344-year status? And he would say, code four. He's good. He's good. You know, there's no fear there. There's no pain. There's no stress. 
There's no worries. There's no darkness. There's no loneliness. There's no unresolved relationships. There's no unmet needs. There's, there's no shadows. There can't be shadows because the whole place is lit by the glory of Jesus himself. There were no shadow for that. We would not bring him back from that if we could. And I'll be honest with you, he wouldn't come. Because he's home. Oh, we're going to miss him. Now, how do I know this? Because the Bible is crystal clear about this. And the testimony of what started down there in the grinding booth at Mastercraft and ended up on the altar of your church makes it crystal clear. For those who know Jesus, there is no death. It's just a transfer of addresses. He's just going to go somewhere else. Hey, hey, death. Now who's scared of you? What happened to your stinger now? There's not one. I hope you can get some comfort from that. He's, he's good. Now, I want to say something to the Blue family. Y'all can listen. Several years ago, many years ago, my grandfather got shot. He had a 17-year-old son, my dad. And through that event, something happened. The seeds of hate and anger and fear, along with guilt, and shame were planted inside my dad from that event. And those things came together to become a grinding wheel. And it ground and ground and ground and ground away chunks of his life. Some people in here, they know what that's like. It, chunk, it ground away on relationships, ground away part of his fatherhood. He became another, a second victim and it chewed him up. Thankfully, thank God, he was finally released from that misery. This is a long story. I don't have time to tell you, but I do want to tell you, my, my, my friends, that evil is not done. It wants more victims. Do you understand? Evil wants to, bring, to destroy more lives from this, and we have to battle this kind of evil too. Everybody with me on this? We have to battle this kind of evil. Well, I know you're looking at me and go, well, well what, what weapon do we draw for that? What kind of weapon do we deploy against evil like that that wants to destroy more lives? Well, let me read it to you out of the book. It defines the weapon. Let me read it to you. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Don't let evil conquer you. You conquer evil by, anybody know the rest of that? Doing good. The, it sounds counterproductive because we want to battle it and fight it and shoot it. But the, but the weapon against evil is by doing good. And you guys, those badges from where we're at, they're gleaming. Do you see them? You guys do it every day. Every single day, and I'm not talking about what's on your body camera. Most of it, nobody ever knows about it. Your boss, the sheriff never knows about it. When you pause, I see you with children. You take that extra moment because you see that admiration in their eyes. I've seen it over and over how you take that moment with kids and you rub them on the head or get on a knee and you talk to them and you spend a minute with them and you inspire them because they think you are the greatest thing in the world and you are because you're good to those kids. I've seen it. I know how tough you think you are, but you're as soft as they come. I've seen it when you go in your pocket. Chief, you know what I'm talking about. You go in your own pocket and you bring out money and you just hand it around to some people who you don't know if you're just trying to help. I've seen you do it to help somebody 
or when you, you're going up the road and you just stop to help somebody. You don't have to do it. Did anyway. I was going to the dump the other day and had a mattress blow off my truck. Where's York? Blue lights popping in behind me. Need some help? We thumped that mattress back on there. I tied it down better this time. And I'm sure he went on and never thought another thing about it, but I did. Nobody else stopped. That's called good. That's good. That's good. My grandson, who's five years old, he thinks that, that Officer Shane Collins of the Maryville Police Department is the greatest man that lives, maybe besides me. You know why? Because Shane takes a minute with him and rubs him on the head and plays around with him a little bit. He just takes an extra minute. That's good. Or when Chase brought the Bearcat to my grandson's birthday party. Bet you didn't know about that one, Sheriff. <laughs> you see them little boys climbing all over it. It was unbelievable. Didn't have to do that. It took extra time to do that. I've seen you when you put your arms around somebody and at a wreck or when you hold a hand of an old person as they're loading them up into the ambulance. And I've seen you cry with victims of crime. That's doing good. That's doing good. Like coming over here from Dallas or New York or Connecticut or Chicago or Rockwood or Sweetwater or Knoxville. Those guys are in this building now. That's doing good. This goodness is behind the badge. And it goes way beyond tactical or technique or shooting or handcuffs. Your goodness that you have is the greatest weapon ever deployed against evil. It's the greatest weapon ever designed. Keep fighting evil. Keep doing good. Romans 8, 28 says this, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we don't understand it, but there's a plan at work here. Not sure where it, how to figure that plan out, but I don't, I don't quite understand it. But here's how it works. When death has come and Taking our loved one, it makes a home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. But here comes the hope. Farther along we'll all understand it. Farther along we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. All right, 344. Thank you. You set a standard for us. Thank you for showing us the way. Things will change because of you. I guarantee you that. And brother, we'll see you on the other side. It's better on the other side. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Pastor James Willis. Come and share. Amen. I tell you what, uh, I mean, I know hearts is breaking. I mean, I can, uh, our heart is. We got the pleasure of meeting Greg, and it's already been said. Uh, Amen. We got to meet him down at the church house. Amen. At Knob Road, uh, he got ordained as a deacon the same time I got ordained as a preacher and uh, came to fell in love. Well, I mean, he loved him, loved his family. We used to have uh, Christmas together, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I mean, just a joy to be around him. Amen. If you knew him, amen, you loved him. And uh, But I tell you what, uh, I told the family here the other night, there Saturday night over at their house, I I told them, I said, uh, if you plan on being with Greg again, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. Because I tell you what, uh, what Greg done down there at Knob Road Missionary Baptist Church that uh, Sunday, whenever he went down to an altar, uh, called upon the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, asked him to come into his heart. I tell you what, it changed uh, his destination, amen, just a few minutes on the altar of God. I tell you what, that's what it's all about, uh, amen, changing, amen, our destination from hell uh, uh, into glory land, amen. And I can't do that on my own, amen. It takes the blood uh, of Jesus Christ, amen. He came to bleed and to die, amen, to go to Calvary's cross. That's why our Savior came here. He came for one reason, amen. He didn't come uh, uh, for two or three different reasons. He came uh, uh, for one thing, amen, to do the will of the Father, amen, to come and uh, to pay the blood atonement, amen, for all mankind uh, uh, that we don't have to die lost, amen, and go uh, uh, to a devil's hell, amen. But I tell you what, uh, uh, what he done on Calvary uh, uh, 2,000 some years ago, uh, uh, he made a way, brother, amen, for a whosoever that uh, we could be saved, amen, be born again and know uh, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt whenever this thing uh, called life is over down here uh, uh, that we've got a better place, amen. Uh, some call it heaven, uh, but I tell you what, amen, if you've been saved uh, by God's grace, amen, and the blood has been applied to your heart, amen, you get to call it home, amen, and I'm glad today, amen, that I, amen, I'm born again, amen, a child of the living King, amen, child of God today, and, amen, I get to call amen, heaven, my home, and amen, and I'm going to get, uh, brother, to see him again, son. Amen. I know you will. Amen. You saved, ain't you? Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. It's knowing uh, that whenever this time comes, amen, and it's going to come. It's going to come to each and every individual. Amen. In the house today. Amen. There's only two, brother, amen, that I've ever known of uh, to escape death. Amen. Uh, one was Elijah and the other was Enoch. Amen. Everybody else, amen, had to go uh, by the way of the grave. Amen. Uh, well, we're going to go that way. Amen unless the Lord splits those eastern skies, amen, it comes and gets us, amen, as a born-again believer, amen, that's what it's all about, brother, amen, it ain't about nothing else, amen, it's about, amen, getting ready uh, for this hour right here, amen, because we're going to face it one day, and who's to say, amen, I won't face it whenever I walk out them doors, amen, uh, but if it comes to me, brother, amen, I'm ready, amen, to go, that's where the hope's at, amen, it's not in this world, it's not in the bank account, it's not what you live in, it's not what you drive, amen, but it's the blood, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ being applied to your heart and soul, amen. That's where we've got hope at today. I tell you people today, they've got their hope, amen, in the wrong thing. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm glad, amen, I can call him my brother. Uh, I tell you what, I went the same way. Amen. I went, I heard a man of God stand and preach me the word of God. Amen. And he told me, he said, amen, I heard it like this, amen, God getting lost, amen. Uh, whenever you get lost, amen, and you, whenever God holds you over hell, I bet he don't drop you, amen. Uh, then, then you'll know what to do, amen. You won't have to preach or amen to stand, amen, and preach too long, amen, whenever you get in no shape, amen, uh, because you'll fall out uh, wherever you're at, amen, and come down to an altar of God, amen, and call upon him, Amen, the only uh, one that's able uh, to save a soul from hell. Amen, and that's Jesus Christ, amen. And whenever he went to Calvary that day, he went there. They didn't take his life. He laid her down willingly. Uh, he went to Calvary's cross for one reason, to pay a sin debt that I owed, to pay a sin debt that you owed. But you know what? We didn't have nothing to pay with. We had nothing to pay with. Uh, but he went and he paid a debt that he didn't know. 
He paid her brother, amen, for one reason. Because back over in the beginning, amen, what Adam and Eve done over in the garden of guests over there, amen, in the garden of Eden, amen, sin came in in this world. And he said, man is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Amen, I tell you what, you can look around in our world today and you can see the trouble, amen, that we're in all over this world and country today. Amen, they're calling evil good and good evil, brother. I tell you what, that's why it pays today. Amen, if you ain't right with God, amen, you need to be a getting right with God because this day, brother, it's a going to come, amen. Ready or not, it's calling the saved, it's calling the lost, amen. And one thing, it's going to need to be there. Whenever I see the blood, he said, I'll pass over you, amen. The blood's the only thing that's going to get you through the gate. That's the only thing. Silver and gold, it'll stay here. Huh, but I tell you what, whenever the death angel, he passed through Egypt, he said, whenever he passed through, he was looking for one thing. And he said, whenever I see the blood, I'll pass over you. See, that's where the hope is. He said, preacher, I wanted you to say this, that, or the other. I tell you what, you got to say what God says to say. Man, I ought to obey God rather than man. Huh, but I tell you what, this is where it's all at. I'm going to see him again. He won't be in this body here like you said there a minute ago, brother, one that's going to ache and hurt. And, hey, man, you wake up in the morning and you see which muscles are hurting you the worst that day before you roll over. Uh-uh, he won't be in that one. But I tell you what, there's going to be a day coming. I don't believe we're too far from that day. He said, where the Lord himself shall ascend with the voice of an archangel. And I tell you what, he's going to shout. Amen. There's going to be a trumpet sound so loud. Amen. It's going to wake the dead. Amen. And he said, but be not ignorant, brother, concerning them uh, which are asleep. Amen. All right, now he's asleep. Amen. With the Lord. Amen. He's at rest with Jesus. Uh, but I tell you what, he said it ain't going to prevent him. Amen. Because whenever the Lord uh, comes back to get to church, amen, uh, those that are asleep in the Lord, amen, he's going to bring back with him. They're going to go back. Amen. To that body. Uh, united, amen, and come out of there, amen, a glorified body, amen, and I tell you what, whenever it's all said and done, that's when it'll pay off, amen, and to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and that's when it's all going to matter, and the world don't want to hear this, but I tell you what, it's the only thing that'll keep a man, woman, boy, or girl out of the pits of hell is the blood, it's just the blood, being good is all right. Being moral is all right, but it's not enough. Well, he gave us the law, the Ten Commandments over there. It's good to live with, but it's not good to die by. Uh-uh, he said, oh, well, it was weak. And God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. That's why Jesus came to pay the price that we owed. But I tell you what, whenever he went to Calvary, Amen. I tell you, I'm going to read this right here over in John chapter 2, verse 19. And he said, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. They looked at him. They misunderstood everything that our Savior said that day. They was looking at the temple. It took them 46 years to build it over there. And they said, how in the world is he going to build it? Uh, tear it down in three days and raise it right back up. He wasn't talking about that, that what man made. It wasn't what he was talking about at all. He was talking about a day whenever he was going to go, amen, and suffer like no man's ever suffered before. Ever licked it, the devil could throw, I'd throw at him, brother. He took it. They took that cat of nine tails and they whipped him, ripped the flesh right off the Son of God. Amen. They plucked his beard out. They spit upon his face. They done all these things. Amen. The only thing that our Savior was guilty of was loving a sinner that we don't have to die and go to hell because of. The only thing he is guilty of. But I tell you what, whenever he went there, he laid her down. He carried his cross up Golgotha's hill that day. And he lay, it got so heavy, he fell under the load of it. And I tell you what, amen, I tell you what, sin's heavy. And I tell you, we'll fall under the load of it. But our Savior went all the way to Calvary that day. And he laid his life down. And they put a nail in this hand. They put one in this hand. 
They put one down there in his feet, and he hung between the heavens and the earth, amen, until he died. And he was as dead as any man has ever died before. Our Savior died on Calvary that day. Hey, but I've got good news. You want to know where some hope is? Hey, amen. Right here's where our hope is. Hey, amen. He didn't stay dead. And glory to God, he ain't going to stay gone neither. He's a coming back. Hey, amen. To get us and take us home to glory. Hey, amen. Only the ones that's got the blood applied is going to make the trip, though. Huh? He went for one reason. John over there, he said he went. Whenever he looked under the heavens and he looked under the earth and they couldn't find one that was able to go and loose the seals of this book. They told him, he said, John, weep not. He said, I found one. Lord, that makes you want to shout. Huh, there's one that was able to go and loose the seals of this book right here that we could have the everlasting gospel preached of. That we could be born again and know beyond a shadow of a doubt. See, I don't hope I'm saved. I don't think I'm saved. I don't have to go ask my wife if I'm saved. My mom and my dad, they love me dearly, but I tell you what, they couldn't save me. They couldn't do nothing for me as far as the salvation part of it. But I tell you what, I got introduced one Sunday morning at Knob Road Missionary Baptist Church. Brother Jerry Little, he stood and preached the Word of God to me like I'm preaching here today. And little did I know, sitting two-thirds in the back of the congregation, the only reason I went to church that Sunday morning because there's a boy that I coached football asked me to go. Little did I know, though, that Sunday morning God had a different plan for me. He came looking for me. I didn't go looking for Jesus that Sunday morning. But I tell you what, he come looking for me that Sunday morning. And I tell you what, if anybody, I tell you what, whenever the Lord goes looking for somebody, he'll find you. And he found me in a shape, amen, where everybody needs to be before they get saved. He found me lost and on my way to hell. But I've got good news for you today. My destination's changed. Amen. I tell you, I ain't going to hell. I couldn't go to hell if I wanted to. Amen. And I don't want to. Amen. Because I've heard, amen, about the streets of gold. Amen. Walls of jasper. Uh, gates of pearl. Amen. I've seen. Amen. I've read in the Word of God. Amen. About God's throne. Amen. There's a rainbow. Amen. Above it. Amen. And what I've read about. Amen. He said, eyes not seen. Uh, neither is ear heard. Uh, neither has it entered into the hearts of Amen, the things that God has prepared uh, for his children. Amen. So I'm glad today I'm saved. I'm glad I'm going to get to see him again. I know we hurt and I know you're going to miss him. I know you loved him. I know he loved you. But boys, I tell you what, this ain't the end. Preacher I come up under, he said this right here. He said, death is just a doorway. If you're saved, you've been born again, and you know that your name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you know that, that's where it's all going to matter. That's where it's all going to pay off at, friend. I know our hearts are going to miss him. Kate, son, I know you are going to miss him. Kate, Leah, Mom, I know you are going to miss him. There'll be days out in front you'll just wish you could pick up a phone and call him. Talk to him just to hear his voice again. But I tell you what, there's a better day yet to come. And the only way you're going to get there, friend, I'm telling you, is through the blood. You won't make the trip no other way. We love you and Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he laid his life down willingly. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him freely, knowing that what man was going to do to him. He said it would be handed over in the hands of sinful men. That's what we are. We're just old sinners. Saved by the grace of God's all I am. I ain't no different, no better than anybody. There ain't nobody, there ain't no big eyes, little U's in here. Brother said at one time, all heads is level at the foot of the cross. Huh, we're all the same in God's eyes. And the one thing he's going to look for whenever it comes to this time right here, I'm sure Greg, that day whenever he went to work, I'm sure he wasn't looking for saying, well, today's the day God's going to call me home. He wasn't looking for that. 
I don't know when God's going to call me home either. It could be whenever I walk out these doors back here, it could be saying, all right, son, it's your time to go. But I'm ready for it. I'm ready. If the call comes today, Job said he'll call and I'll answer. His call come here the other night. Jesus called him home. Son, I'm going to see him again. We'll meet him again. There'll be a reunion one day take place. And we'll be in a land where we'll never say goodbye again. There won't be no dying there. There won't be no crying. He said, for God himself will wipe all tears from our eyes. Down here we cry because we have sorrow. We have pain. We have these things. But there's going to be a day of coming where Jesus is going to wipe all tears from our eyes. And there will never be no more crying. There ain't a tombstone one in glory land. Because there's no dying going to be there. He said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So the best is yet to come if you're saved. If you're not saved, though, make plans to be ready. He said today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not promised. We don't know if tomorrow will come or not. Who in here right now under the sound of my voice could say, I'll, I'm going to see you tomorrow with 100% assurity? Is anybody, can anybody do that? Not a one of us can. But I can take you by the hand. Brother, you don't know me at all. Probably never even seen me before, have you? But I can take you by the hand right here this day. And I can affirm you, assure you, that I'll be in glory one day if my life down here is over. Amen. I can firmly assure you that I'll be with Jesus whenever it's over here. And right on down the line, I can take you by the hand and tell you, I'll be with Jesus whenever it's over here. Uh, can you take that one beside you right now? And can you shake their hand and you affirm and tell them, I'll be with you, Lord. Uh, can you do that? I can go right on down the line, Roger. You say, preacher, this is a funeral. No, this is a celebration of life that our brother lived. But I can celebrate the life that he lived because I know one day after a while, I'm going to meet up with him again. But I can go right on down the line and I can tell you, I'm going to be with Jesus. Not of works, he said, Billy, lest any man should boast. But it is the free gift of God. Amen. It's a free gift. And for that gift, it's offered. And it's offered for a whosoever. You can be the vilest sinner they are to ever walk the face of this earth. And Jesus died for you. That you could be saved. That you could be born again. He told Nicodemus just as straight as any man's ever told him. He said, marvel not, Nicodemus. You must be born again. You must be born again. I had a birth in 1976 by Mary and Cecil Willis in Blunt Memorial Hospital. Don't remember nothing about it. But whenever I was 23 years old, whenever I was telling you about whenever Brother Jerry preached that message that Sunday morning, I've had a birth that I can't remember. But that birth on that Sunday morning, I tell you what, I ain't got over it. <laughs> Because I got born again. Huh? And because of the first birth, it don't really matter that much. But that second birth is when it really matters. Because of that second birth, it's why I get to go to be with Jesus whenever it's all said and done. And that's the only way to get there is through the blood. If heaven's real, you believe heaven's real? Just as sure as I'm standing here in front of you right now, heaven's real. And if heaven's real, then there is a hell. A literal burning hell. He said the rich man died, and he said in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment. And he prayed. You know what they're doing in hell right now? They're praying. What they should have done on this side of eternity, they're doing it in hell now, but they waited too late. 
And he said, they're praying. He said he prayed that he'd send Lazarus over, that he may dip his finger in water and just touch the tongue of him for his torment and in his flame. So that's where it's at. That's where reality is. That's where rubber meets the road, so to speak. If heaven's real, then hell is real. But hell wasn't prepared for man. It was prepared for the devil and his angels is who it's prepared for. So if you go to hell, you'll go over what I've preached to you here today. You'll go over the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary 2,000 some years ago. And you'll go over the death, the burial, and the resurrection of what Jesus done. And he done it for all of us. Don't go to hell, friend. He said, make your call and election sure. I'm trying to shut up. I am. I'll be done here in just a minute. But he said, make your call and an election sure. Greg made his call and an election sure. Was he perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. Nobody else in here is neither. But I tell you what, it was all because of what Jesus done for him on that day on the altar. He said, I'll stand at your heart's door. And he said, I'll knock. He said, if any man opens that door. See, the doorknob, whenever Jesus is knocking on your heart's door, the doorknob's on the inside. You're the one that'll have to make the decision to let him in and accept him. Preacher, I've gone too far. No, you ain't. If you'd went too far, God wouldn't be dealing with you. God wouldn't be talking to you. I'm talking to somebody. I ain't very smart, but I tell you what, I know what the Holy Spirit of God feels like. Friend, don't leave this walk of life without knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're ready. I love you. I really do. I love you, family. I know your dad loved you. He loved you. He loved you, Mom. Friends, he loved you. I know it's hard to say goodbye, but like I said, this thing, it's just for a little while, and we'll meet him again. Take us to heart what I told you. I told you the truth. It'll be either testimony for you, or it'll be a testimony against you, one or the other. Jesus loves you, and he come here for one reason, to pay a debt that we all owed, and he paid it in full that day on Calvary. And he's seated right this second, right now, on the right hand of the Father for one reason, to make intercession for you and me. He loves you. He banked her up to heaven that day whenever he came here just for us that we could be saved. Amen. Appreciate you. Appreciate the Lord. We love you. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Sheriff Jimmy Davis of Loudoun County. He is going to uh, go through the presentation of the flags. Thank you, Chief. The Sheriff, Chiefs, Blount County Sheriff's Office, and to the family, I would give my sincerest condolences from myself, my staff at the Sheriff's Office, and the community that we serve. You are in our prayers. A couple of years ago, lost an officer on February 3rd, Sergeant Chris Jenkins at our sheriff's office. We had an idea to have multiple flags given for the family so those very close to him could have a flag that they could remember him by. Uh, we've decided with the sheriff's office to do that again today. Also, Kate, I should have listened to that first song all the way through. You got me on that one. So the first flag we'd like to present is the flag, Greg's flag. It was placed on him at Blunt Memorial Hospital during his transportation to the Regional Forensic Center. That flag we call the agency flag and it will be donated and given to Sheriff James Lee Barong of the Blunt County Sheriff's Office and presented by the Maryville Police Chief, Tony J. Crisp.
on behalf of a grateful nation, grateful state, grateful community, and the men and women of the law enforcement community, it's my high honor and pleasure to present you with the first flag that draped our fallen deputy, Greg McCown. Secondly, flag number two is Greg's flag that traveled with him from the Regional Forensic Center to Smith Funeral Home. That would be presented to his mother, or Mammy, Elizabeth Talby, presented by Blunt County Sheriff's Office, second shift lieutenant, James Wilson. Thirdly, is the flag that traveled with Greg from Smith Funeral Home to Sapphire Heights Baptist Church. The recipient is Greg's fiance, Leah, presented by Blount County Sheriff's Office Second Shift Sergeant Chris Carter. Our last flag today here will be the flag that travels with Greg last night from Sphere Heights Baptist Church back to Smith Funeral Home, presented to his son, Caden McCowan. The presenter is Blount County Sheriff's Office deputy and good friend of Greg's, Richard Mitchell.
The final flag of the day is Greg's burial flag. That'll be presented at the graveside to his eldest child, Kaylee, from the Sheriff of Blount County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff James Lee Barong, at the graveside. Thank you. God bless you. I could see angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. So go rest high on the ground. So
Lastly, I'd like to introduce my boss, my friend, and my mentor, and my sheriff, James Lee Brown. I had a few things prepared. I just left them back there. I just, there's not the words that can come out of my mouth or the actions that I do up here that will ease the burden on the family. The night I was notified that I was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Fortunately, I had a state agency that helped get myself and Chief French and others back. I'm still in a shock, still in a void. And the more I see the family, the more I cry. Can't imagine. I really, really can't. He was such an asset to the Block County Sheriff's Office. He was an asset, East Tennessee, air community. You know, get someone that would come in at 39 or whatever. He came in, I think, 2020, started a year before that. He was reserved. He took a pay cut, a substantial pay cut, because he had a passion. He wanted to serve the community. He wanted to make a difference. And there's no doubt in my mind that he did. The stories we're here to win a, a life-saving award shows his commitment and dedication and sacrifice he was willing to make to help someone else. He did it the other night. He's faced with a tragic set of circumstances that he could not control at the end. He wasn't alone out there that night. We had a deputy in the audience that was with him. You hadn't heard a lot about her. You've heard me talk a little bit. But she acted, her training kicked in, her professionalism kicked in, and her courage kicked in. She did whatever she could do. She did as much as she could do to get to him to render aid. She was concerned. She was shot in the leg, putting a tourniquet on herself. But you hear, she wanted to get to him. That's love. That's commitment. That's courage. And I know she's bleeding. I know she's... I don't know how the words. Deputy Eggers, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Would you stand up? Thank you. You know, I've got to tell me, you know, what to do most times. And I'm the sheriff. They still tell me what to do, and I guess I need it. They think I do, and I greatly appreciate it. So I'm going to go off just a second, just for a couple minutes. Uh, ship 2 is so close. They're, they're close, and they bond, and then he... I've noticed that more in the last few days than I, I really realized. Sergeant Carter, would you just say just a couple of minutes, please, sir? If, if, if that's not putting you on the spot, would you mind to come up here? I want to turn it over. I, I, he deserves better than me, and you can do the job a lot better. Because we love Greg.
I didn't have much time to prepare, so stand by. So when I found out that I was going to speak, my stomach dropped. And the reason for that is I'm not known to be very eloquent. As a matter of fact, I'm a man of few words, unlike my lieutenant. <laughs> I also don't show my emotions very well. You can ask my exes, there's several, several here tonight. <laughs> But even though I don't express my emotions very well, I can tell you that I am absolutely devastated. As a supervisor, my number one job is to protect my people and give them what they need. That night I failed Greg. I wasn't there when he needed me. But Greg has always was there when someone needed him. Whether he was helping you fix your car or watch your back on a call, he was always there. Greg's death has left a huge wound on this family, on my agency, and on this community. It will never heal. It will scab over and we'll move on because that's what we have to do and that's what Greg would want, but it will never heal. Ma'am, Greg will be greatly missed, but I can promise you as long as I'm alive, he will never be forgotten. I love you, brother. Thank you, Sergeant. Please forgive me. I know you're a big, big man. Uh, the support we've had through this and, and a lot of critical instances end where it started. This did not. I know the family had to go through a lot, us updating them. I made you a commitment and a promise. And with a lot of help from a lot of different agencies, I fulfilled that. I did not want to step on this stage without, without him in custody. That's not going to relieve a lot, but it'll relieve that burden. Thank you for sharing him with us. You ought to be so proud, so we are. And you're gonna feel like you're alone, but you're not. I'm talking about, there's always gonna be somebody around you. Second shift, stand up. I want you to look behind you. You're not alone. Long County Sheriff's Office employees stand up. Second shift, look behind you. You're not alone and never will be. I'm proud of. Greg, I'm proud of each and every one of you. Thank you, family, for the bottom of my heart. I love you. I'd like to have the pallbearers come up.
He was an asset to the Blount County Sheriff's Office, to the community. He had a passion. He wanted to make a difference. Those words from Blount County Sheriff James Barong as he is remembering fallen Blount County Deputy Greg McCowan. We have been watching the funeral for that fallen officer and we are watching now as people are filing out, filing behind the casket of the deputy. We've spent more than an hour now listening to remembrances from people who knew him very closely, who worked alongside him. Some of the people there who were speaking, Governor Bill Lee is there, also Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally, House Speaker Cameron Sexton when it comes to lawmakers and legislators in our community, but also his close friends. And one of the most powerful moments we saw, Robin, was Deputy Shelby Eggers was there. They asked her to stand and there was applause. It was obviously a very rough night for her, as the sheriff pointed out. She did all that she could to try to help her comrade there that night, Deputy McCowan. She herself was shot in the leg and is still recovering, but managed to make it there today. And also early on in the ceremony, an audio recording of her singing the national anthem was played as well. That was exactly. She sang that at the funeral of Knox County Sheriff's Deputy Tucker Blakely late last year. That deputy killed in the line of duty. So many heartfelt stories, mm -hmm. so many heartbreaking stories, but yet some humorous stories yeah. as well. One in particular shared with us by Billy Radford, one of um, the deputy's good friends. He said um, Deputy McCowan had his own style when he <laughs> was not wearing the uniform. He said Little G, as he was called, had a starter kit. It included slides, cargo shorts, muscle shirt, and a white ball cap. And then yet another friend, Greg Willis, his best friend, the deputy's best friend, he was known as Big G and <laughs> McGowan as Little G. He said he didn't understand why because they're both five feet, eight inches tall, <laughs> but one got the big donation and the other the little. And I think that was so powerful, sort of seeing the man behind the badge, but also at the same time having him be honored for wearing the badge. It was a little later in life for him when yeah. he decided to leave Mastercraft there. That's how he made friends with a lot of the folks who spoke there today and decided to join the force. He had a dream of being a law enforcement officer. The sheriff pointed out he even took a pay cut to join the sheriff's office there because he just had a passion to serve. And the chaplain added this, that he, it was revealed that he had gone through the process to become a crime scene investigator and what we've heard from people over and over again this was his passion this is what he was called to do until his final day which ended last Thursday uh, the result of a traffic stop um, you mentioned Governor Bill Lee mm -hmm. he was there he spoke directly to the family saying that Greg McCowan was a hero he put his life in harm's way to protect people of the state that acknowledges the pain, the real pain, is with the family. And you are watching now as people are filing out of Severe Heights Baptist Church in South Knox County as the procession taking the body of Deputy McGowan to a grave site in Blount County will begin in a matter of minutes. And as that happens, we do have our team live outside the church right now, both 10 News anchor John Becker and reporter Vinay Simlot, who can share with us what they're seeing from their perspective. As we I've been we just saw as you mentioned we saw moments of laughter and humor and also moments of real pain what is happening now is my colleague Vinay Simlon and I are standing in a parking lot it is a literal sea of blue here hundreds of police vehicles and first responders have come to witness this as we heard during the remarks during the ceremony we know there are officers here from New York and beyond all the way across East Tennessee and much of this country have come to pay their respects to this fallen deputy in Blunt County. I want to bring in my colleague Vinay Simlot because Vinay, from here, this will be a procession back to Blunt County that should take about 20 minutes and is about a dozen miles or so. And we were told that um, Deputy McCowan's casket will wait here at the church for a about 30 to 45 minutes as everybody gets situated and as they start heading that way. We also know that they're going to Grandview Cemetery that is in Maryville.